Hey everybody, it's Tom from MC Things here, and we're gonna do another YouTube video today showing you a new project that we've put together. We're actually putting together a small moisture sensor that's attached to the MC module, and after this, we're gonna go through the code, and then I'll show you how we put this together. And then, of course, we're also gonna do a demo showing you how it's checking the moisture of different plants and stuff in the office here. So, let's get going. All right, here we go in MC Studio again, and what we're gonna do is walk through the code we're using for these moisture sensors that are attached to the modules. It's almost exactly the same pin setup we used. It's actually the same pin setup we used for the light sensor video that we put out not too long ago. We're gonna use, use pin zero for analog input, pin six for digital output. We're also putting a 100K resistor between those two pins to act as a voltage divider. Now, as a side note, you can, in certain sensors and stuff, you can actually directly solder into the MC module. It has a built-in resistor, so you can use that and get analog to digital conversions um, and, and basically not put in your own voltage divider. But depending on the sensor, calibration, you know, whatever you're kind of doing, um, you might find you want to use a, a, a separate voltage divider to, to sort of be a bit more specific, or you could use the one that's built into the module. So your choice there. As we walk through this, of course, I'm going to have this raise every 30 seconds. Now, one of the great things about MC Studio is you can customize when these events get raised. So if you copy this code and realize, you know, I don't need to check this every 30 seconds. I'm good with every five minutes, five hours, five days, five weeks, whatever it might be. Um, you can go in and, and customize this yourself. That's one of the great things and the versatility of the MC Things platform. So as we walk through this, I'm turning on the voltage divider. I'm going to let it sleep a little bit just to stabilize. The big thing and that I really want to get to here and how did I calibrate and realize what is dry and what is moist soil and what is overwatered. So using the, one of the great built-in features in MC Studio, the debugging and stepping through code, um, all that type of stuff that I can do on the fly allows me to calibrate a sensor like this to tailor to my needs and what information I want to know. So as an example, what I did is I, I took the module, I took a dev board, I took the moisture sensor, also had a little cup of water and, and a couple different types of soil with different uh, levels of moisture into it. And then I inserted the moisture sensor into those soils and I debugged it. And so what was happening was I was asking the module to relay the voltage level that was coming from that moisture sensor in these different types of soils and it allowed me to work out what variables mean overwatered, what means moist, fairly moist, or dry. And I'll show you this quickly as I run this to debug. Now, right now the moisture sensor is just sitting on a table, it's not in soil or water. And you can come back and it's giving me a value of 2439. So as I worked through different calibration, checking different soils, I realized that if it was over 1500, then it's dry. If it was between 1499 and 600, then it was what I deemed as fairly moist. From 599 to 335, it was moist. And anything under 355 was overwatered. So I'm just going to stop this debugging right now. So this is a great thing. Now I can actually go and calibrate these sensors. And now if you buy one and it's not the exact same one that I, I, I have, um, and you might need to calibrate it. You also might need to calibrate depending on the soil. The other thing that you might want to look at is my definition of moist soil might be different than yours. So you can play with this. And the good part is it's really easy to do using that debug feature and adding uh, or taking away breakpoints to get variables back um, from the module itself. So the other thing I did, of course, is I figured out which different payloads I wanted to do, and that's coming in through an MQTT, so that'll show up in my phone. I'm also asking the module to check the temperature every minute. I'm going to put this one out in the garden, so now I can just on the fly and, and basically real time uh, just look on my phone and find out what is the temperature in my garden at any given point, and of course, what is the soil moisture in there as well. The last thing I'm going to do here is just to make sure that my battery's up to snuff and I've got juice in it and it, it's working well, I'm going to have the module check its, its battery voltage every couple of hours and if it finds it's low it's going to send me a note through IFT and tell me uh, via notification on my phone so you know it's a really easy recipe I set up it'll just send me a, a notification and tell me that the battery needs to be replaced so that's pretty easy we're going to post this code of course into our forum and at the bottom of this YouTube video so you guys can play around with it and try this out yourselves but let's get to the fun stuff let's see this in action all right, so now that we've walked through the code, let's get to the fun part, which is actually showing you how we put this together and then do a demo. So one thing I just want to mention, I went to an electronic store, I just bought some cases, I did this over the weekend, it was really easy to do. The other thing that we actually did is you need a moisture sensor. So as an example, this is one that I purchased from AliExpress. It's very inexpensive, um, it's really easy to work with. And let me show you how we put this together, so come have a look down here. 
All right, so as you can see, what we did is we just bought some small little cases. Um, I dremeled in and put these uh, sensors into there, and I'll show you what they actually look like inside. So as I take this case off here, and as we look, we've got the moisture sensor soldered in, and we've got them attached. So as I mentioned in the code part, it's exactly the same pin setup as the light sensor video. As you can see, we've got soldered into pin zero. We have the other one soldered into the ground, and we have this 100K resistor that's acting as a voltage divider and it is soldered into pin zero and pin six, and that's what's actually giving us the measurement here. So a nice little case, put it all together and close it up, and it's just like that. So let's uh, show you these in action. All right, so now we're gonna do the demo part of this video. So we have two of these moisture sensors set up, just like we showed you, but they're all basically the same, a little bit different size cases. Now they're both sitting just on the table. Obviously they're not in soil, not in water. And I just wanna show you on my phone what I've done. So they're actually gonna come out and tell this that they're dry, out of water, we need some, uh, some water there. So as an example, next thing I'm gonna do is gonna put the first one into this rose plant. I'm gonna put the second one just into the soil on the second one here. And we'll watch now, it's gonna take 30 seconds of course for uh, these to report back. And we'll have a look at this. So um, again, it's gonna come through my MQTT broker and I've just got this on a phone, uh, my Android phone and the app's called MQTT Dashboard. So I highly recommend checking it out. Um, we'll see this in a couple seconds here, what the soil moisture is on the first plant. It'll pop up any time, so it's fairly moist. And the second one will show up in a second here. Of course, I also have the temperature going every 30 seconds, or sorry, every minute, because I'm gonna put it into my garden. So we can see that the first plant is fairly moist, the second one is actually moist. And I also just have, uh, have beacons coming in as well on my MQTT app as, as a secondary thing I wanna do. The last thing I wanna show you is show you what it looks like when it's over water. So I've got uh, my MC mug here and it's filled with water. I'm actually just gonna put the sensor in there and we'll have a look. And it should show up here in a second saying overwatered. All right, so there we go, overwatered. And it's just that easy. So now what I can do with these is I can actually go and just place them into different plants. All I have to do is wait 30 seconds and find out what the soil moisture is and then determine do I need to water those plants or not. I could also go ahead and actually set up alerts maybe through IFT or even this phone app actually have alerts set up so that it can push me a notification if I need to water these plants or something like that. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. It was a pretty cool, neat, easy little project. Um, and again, this is something I just did over the weekend. All you needed to do was get some cases, of course, MC modules, and a moisture sensor. So we will be putting the code into our forum. We'll also put it onto our YouTube video. I'll also put the link of where we got this, but you can find these at SparkFun. You can find them at Adafruit. Um, there's lots of different places you can kind of look at getting these types of uh, sensors, and of course, all sorts of other sensors that are available out there. The other thing I kind of want to mention is, you know, this is a nice, easy project. I can do this in the office, and we're, we're going to do this in my garden. But the real thing that, that I hope you guys can take away from this is that, you know, using the MC Things platform to develop products and, and turning and starting businesses, it's fantastic things to do. Imagine creating these for a greenhouse or a commercial garden where those companies could actually get real-time information on temperature, soil moisture, maybe you attach a humidity sensor, a light sensor. There's all sorts of different things you can do. It's a fantastic opportunity, and I hope one of, somebody out there takes, uh, takes a, that up and, and does that off further. The last thing I also want to mention, um, if you haven't checked it out on our website, we have, are creating modules that work on the Sigfox network. Um, so if you don't know what Sigfox is, it's an LP WAN, low power wide area network. It's rolling out across the world. We're one of the first in North America to sort of create devices that will work on that. Imagine putting a sensor like this or any other sensors onto that type of device where you could remotely deploy them and have that information relay back to the cloud. So, you know, I think of smart farmers fields, smart produce fields. Um, there's all sorts of different applications, either using the MC Air network like we're using here or potentially using Sigfox. So check it out uh, at our website, mcthings.com. You can also check it out at sigfox.com and learn a little bit more about their stuff. Um, and that's it for today. So really appreciate the time. We want to hear from you on Twitter. We want to hear from you on Instagram. Check out our other YouTube videos. Come talk to us on the forum. And we'll hope to uh, talk to you soon. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks.